Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about March 10th uh, League of Legends DFS slate. It's a four game slate. Um, we have two games in China um, and two games in Korea. Um, but a quick recap about yesterday. Um, I apologize for not posting a video yesterday. I was not I was not feeling good. Uh, but nonetheless, it was uh, kind of like a chalky slate with Oh, four of four favorites having really big odds as a favorite. So nonetheless, it you know, it was a good slate for, you know, at least some of our members. Um, but yeah, let's move on to today's slate. It's a four game slate. Um, but before we go any further, if you can please hit the like button below, um, it will be greatly appreciated. But in China today, um, we have two games. A decent favorites, BLG at minus 300 against NIP, and then OMG at minus 400 against FPX. One thing to note about the starters um, in NIP, uh, we have Shadow um, starting at Jungle. He was literally just signed by NIP yesterday, and he used to be a jungler for LGD uh, last season. Um, and he, he's he's fine. I mean, he's an okay jungler in my opinion. Um, he was he used to be really good. Um, I think when he used to play at the LEC for I think it was Mad Lions, I believe. Um, and then he came over to the LPL to play on LGD, and he was all right. I mean, he's a he's a very not a very, but he's more of an aggressive jungler than XLB in my opinion. So I, I do think um, him playing naturally increases the kill upside for NIP, but also the opposing team. So I do like this matchup uh, kill upside a little more. So if I were a straight up better, I would definitely go on over, uh, bet on over the total kills projected. I think it was at 23, no, 25. So yeah, I bet on over on that number. But also because I think the combined, I'll go through the metrics now uh, since we're talking about it. Combined kills per minute is, let me make it smaller. Uh, it's at 0 0.80. Um, you see at BLG is at 0 0.81 and NIPs is at 0 0.79. But I do think it will increase um, GIF and Shadow starting at Jungle. So I do like this matchup quite a bit from the GPP standpoint and primary stack standpoint uh, for DFS purposes. Um, and you see the jungle control percentage, BLG leads in both, uh, you know, jungle control and the lane control percentages. But as mentioned, it's a new jungler that's starting. Um, and I'll talk about how I think he will mesh in with the NIP, um, the rest of his teammates. Uh, but I'll just go through the metrics. Um, GSPD BLG leads by point three, uh, five point three percent. That's that's pretty significant. Um, and you see that BLG has an early uh advantage in every single lane, including jungle, uh, over uh NIP. So, and uh, I know I said I talked about Shadow starting, and he was literally just signed yesterday. Um, but you see that Dream is starting at mid um, over Pout. So we have two new starters, kind of, because Dream had started before for a while, and then Pout came on. But now they're going back to Dream. Now that Shadow is starting, maybe they have a you know better synergy between them two. Um, have played against, uh, played together before. Uh, maybe I don't know. So you know, it's an interesting dynamic, interesting change. Um, obviously that can be disruptive and at the same time beneficial. Some for some teams that are struggling, maybe they're injecting some new blood into this team, and you know that can obviously turn out well. But I'm suspicious um, that Shadow is not gonna make that much of a difference today, at least. I mean, he literally just joined yesterday, right? He signed with them yesterday. So he probably had maybe one day or maybe just few, several days of just scrimmaging and practicing with this team on a new team like this in the LPL. I mean, that's going to be pretty hard to do, right? I think there will be some synergy issues with the rest of his teammates. 
Um, and then as mentioned, Dream is starting. So like there will be a lot of like uncertainties here surrounding an IP. And the, sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be really bad. And and for that reason, I looked at the stats from last year between Shadow and XLB, right? So I looked at 2022 summer, um, and you see XLB versus Shadow. XLG, XLB played for uh, Victory 5, yeah, and, and then Shadow, as mentioned, I, I said earlier that LGD, uh, he was the LGD's jungler. Uh, but you see, XLB was actually better in terms of earned goals per minute metric. Um, but the little caveat to that is that Victory 5 was a much, much better team than LGD was. So that that naturally made XLB's uh, jungling a lot easier than Shadow's, Tr Shadow's team, where Shadow actually was the one who was carrying some some LGD wins uh, last year. So, yeah, I mean, I, I say that with a caveat, but you see that XLB was actually better. But XLB's number, you see 219 from last year, 219 versus 176 this year. So XLB has been underperforming. Uh, for NIP, but NIP's team is not that great. So, you know, I, I do think, you know, these numbers are not like, uh, you know, 100% fair representation as to how these uh, uh, junglers and the individual players are playing, performing, uh, because, you know, as mentioned, they are influenced by the, by the rest of his teammates, but also the way that his team plays throughout the season. So, but I think, nonetheless, I think it's interesting to see that Shadow was not that much better than XLB, if any, uh, last year. So I do think it's not going to make that much of a difference. I think people are excited about Shadow starting because people know his name and they played DFS last year, League of Legends DFS last year. But I actually don't think it's going to make matter that much, uh, matter that much. Uh, so... I'm actually going to stick with my BLG pick. Uh, I like BLG here tonight a lot. I think it's a BLG smash spot, given the higher kill upside with Shadow starting. So, you know, LGD last year had, had a very high CKPM. Uh, at times, uh, so I do like, and that was partially due to Shadow's playstyle at jungle. So if he continues the way that he performed and liked to play last year, and brings it to NIP this year, especially tonight, um, I think BLG is in a very smash spot. I think BLG wins this tonight. LG wins two to zero. I think it could be two to one, right? I think I think a lot of these uncertainties with Shadow and Dream starting, maybe BLG is not quite ready for that. They don't know what to expect. They don't have a game plan. Maybe I don't know, but you know we'll see. But I still think BLG ends up winning the series, and the kill upside is really good. All right, the next matchup on the slate is FPX versus OMG. OMG is a favorite at minus 400. Um, the projected kill upside is, is set at 23, and then CKPM at 0.75. And OMG leads literally all of these metrics um, over FPX. So I get it. I think I'm going to pick OMG to win the series. However, I just want to point out that it's the jungle control percentage and the lane control percentage are not that significantly uh, larger. Uh, over FPX, I think they are um, actually pretty pretty close, um, closer than I actually thought it was gonna be. So um, if you look at their roster, though, like you see, do I believe in Hacker? No. Do I believe in Aki? No. So like both junglers are kind of eh, mediocre, in my opinion. So I think it's gonna come down to the other lanes. I, I like Shanji a lot. And Cream and Abel showed up last last series, and I do think they are much better than Karen LWX. So, like on the, the my eye test tells me that OMG should win here, uh, but you know who knows what's gonna happen, right? I do think it's gonna be closer than people and the odds indicate uh, here tonight. So, 
I think OMG wins two to one. FPX is a live dog, in my opinion. Looking at the slight difference in jungle and lane control percentage difference. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have a sprinkle of FPX, even though they are the biggest uh, LPL underdog team tonight. Um, I like to stick with BLG. So unless if you are a huge believer in Shadow tonight, uh, you could go NIP. But you know, I I'm not a believer in that tonight. All right, and in Korea we have a huge huge favorite at uh twenty eight hundred <laughs> for D plus Kia over Nongshim Red Force. Um, the kill upside is very low, though, point, 19.5 kills over under, and then 0. 0.64 for uh, for the CKPM for this matchup. Um, but nonetheless, I think, you know, you see that D-plus Kia leads all metrics significantly over Nongshim Red Force. So I'm going to have to go DK wins, and they need this win to kind of fight up in the playoff rankings uh against the other lck teams t1 really secured the the second playoff round uh spot uh this morning but d plus kia really needs this win to be able to kind of compete against those other elite teams for seeding purposes uh yeah so dk wins here two to zero i think but is the kill upside gonna be decent I don't think so. I want to see Nongshim's uh, recent trend to see if they have been playing a little more bloody League of Legends. So D plus Kia. So you see CKPM, I, I mentioned that 0.64 where Nongshim Red Force is actually the one that has higher CKP, CKPM. So 0. 0.68, 0. 0.59. I want to see the most recent patch, uh, how that has affected their play style. 0. 0.69 for, so about the same, and 0. 0.65 for D plus Kia, which is higher than their split average. Um, so that's interesting. So let's see, 0. 0.68, 0. 0.69. Yeah, playing a little bit faster. Okay. I think, I actually think the kill upside, the kill upside should be moderate. So I think it's going to be a moderate kill, maybe like 10 to 15 total kills for Dumbledore D plus Kia. So I think it's a it's a decent spot. DK is in a this decent spot. All right, and then we have excuse my uh nasalness, uh having some allergy issues here tonight. Uh, but we have KT versus Fred Brian. We have uh KT at favorite at minus four twenty five. And we have projected kills 20 and we can see KPM at 0 0.60. So it's even lower than the D plus Kia matchup, uh, even though D plus Kia's projected kills over under that game is lower. So I think that's partially because D plus Kia favors so heavily over in Ocean Breath Force. So that's probably why. But you see jungle control percentage and all these metrics all favor KT as well. So I think KT should win. KT is also in that playoff uh, seeding hunt uh, against D plus Kia, basically. So especially if you, if if I were KT, if I watch like DK win that series before they play, I think KT will be very motivated to beat uh, Fred and Breon tonight. Uh, even though I think Fred and Breon is a better team than Notion Red Force, I think KT should be able to win this. Um, and Fred and Breon just does not make a good GPP play tonight, unfortunately, just given that low kill upside. And they like to play very slow. 
like probably the slowest team in the LCK and in, in, even in the LPL, obviously. So, yeah, I like KT to win two to zero, probably. And Brad Brian is not a good GPP play based on the slow play style. So even if they do pull off an upset, uh, Fred and Breon, they're not going to score well, most likely. So that's why I'm saying that they're not a good GPP play. Um, and I think KT should be, all, should be all right. I think they like to play a little bit faster. Um, you know, I think this can flip-flop between DK and KT in terms of kill upside. So, yeah, I mean, pick your poison there. I think both LCK games should be lower in kills compared to the other LPL matches tonight. Uh, so, but I say that probably every night, but except, you know, there's sometimes the LCK just scores well in LPL games. Sometimes they just end in like, you know, nine to five or something like that. So, and JDG, that happened, happened this morning. I think we're two nights, two days ago. Uh, so anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. I apologize that I'm not feeling as well. Uh, I didn't make a video yesterday and I'm still struggling quite a bit but hope you guys enjoyed the video if you enjoy the video please hit the like button below otherwise uh, good luck out there and have fun bye bye